So what does bisect mean? Split equally, good. So we can mark these two angles as congruent. And then what do you do with the two expressions? Yeah. So we'll show all the steps, I guess, this time. You like that down? <laughs> Okay, and then it also asks for angle BST. So BST is that big one. Um, 3 times 9 plus 4. So 31 degrees. Now we can put degrees. Don't put degrees on 9 because it's not just an angle. How'd that go? Awesome. Did it feel familiar? We haven't looked at a bisector kind of problem for a little while, or at least not like that. So. All right, well, yesterday we did a bunch of proving, a bunch of logic, so why don't you grab that. I think we have one page left, I think. So my plan and goal and hope Yeah, so we talked through page three, so it's just these two proofs left. Um, what do you guys think about taking your, it's really the second half of the unit quiz tomorrow uh, with, I think there's three or four review problems from the first stuff that we did, kind of like the warm up, like not necessarily that problem, but something like that. So what do you think? Tomorrow too soon? I have the review, we can work on it. We can do these two proofs, maybe just even one of them, and then do the review. So almost a full class period of review. And it's short, one, two, three pages, the review I mean. So, feeling good? Why don't we do one of these two proofs? And how about the second one? Actually, I don't like this game. Kind of the same. Um, do you guys struggle more with when it says supplementary or congruent? Does it matter? Yeah, yeah awesome. Well, let's see the second one then. Anyway, while you're doing that, I'll hand out your review. We'll check this proof. There are a couple more on here, so you'll get more practice if you need it. And let's just do our test tomorrow. What do you think,
Looks like a lot of you are done with this, so. G kind of got cut off, but you know, that one. And we can't really show that angles one and four are supplementary. Uh, not really a notation for that. So how are we going to link those together in such a way that we can prove P and R are parallel? First thing to remind you, actually, before we answer that, is that you can't assume any of the angles that are formed by P and R, you can't assume any of those properties to be true. So, like 3 and 4 are what kind of angles? They're alternate interior, but we can't assume they're congruent until we prove the lines are parallel. 2 and 4 are what? Same side interior, but we can't assume they're supplementary until we prove those lines parallel. Okay? But, all of that is probably okay. We just have to do it kind of in the, I don't know. We've said kind of the, what have we said? The bridge is out, so what have we used? I'm losing my mind. Huh? Well, I don't know if we've said the, like an alternate route. The back roads, maybe? Oh. Something like that. Like. Basically, we have to be able to prove one of those things we just mentioned is true without using the parallel lines to prove that it's true, okay? So, there are more than one way, or is more than one way. Anybody want to volunteer your method? Well, we are proving lines parallel. So, where do you look on your reference page? How can you prove lines are parallel? Yeah. 
Just those five. Yeah, just those last five. So it's either converse. We know that this last step is going to be converse of something. So we just have to figure out what. Well, when I look at that, I only see the two we talked about. It's either alternate interior or same side interior. Do you see that too? It's either 2, 4, or 3, 4. So let's pick one of them and make it happen. You want to do 3, 4? Okay. So if he wants to do 3, 4, what is our last line going to be? Well, we have to be able to show that 3 and 4 are what? Congruent, right? Because they are alternate interior, so we have to show that 3 and 4 are congruent. If we can, then we could write alternate interior angles theorem after converse. I will tell you this is the longer method or version. Does that matter? Did anybody else do it that way with 3 and 4? How many of you did 2 and 4? Two of you? Okay. Huh? Let's... I kind of get the feeling that we're not sure how to do this one, am I right? Because nobody's volunteering much information. Is this true? One and two, are they congruent? Yes. Yeah, what well, kind are they? Those are alternate interior on the lines we know are parallel on G and H. Okay, so yeah, that's true. Oops, I needed that page. Okay, I want you to look. 1 and 4 are supplementary, but 1 is 2. So if we did this the short way, what could I write next? 2 and 4 are supplementary. Substitution. And then I'm done. This is true because converse of same side interior angles postulate. So it's IAP. If you did this, angle 2 and angle 4 are supplementary because of substitution. Again, the substitution that we did was, uh, let's do it this way, was just take this 2 and stick it right there. Because 1 is 2, so I can plug 1 in for 2. I can substitute 1 in for 2. And, yeah. And then this becomes same side interior angles postulate. And we're done. Okay, that's the short version. So four lines. And let's do the longer version since Noah likes to torture you. No? Okay. Well, we still need that line. Huh? Okay. Well, you can do it the way you said. We need it, yeah. So here's... This is true still, right? That didn't change. Um, and then we would have to say angles 2 and angle 3 are supplementary because of the linear pair postulate. And there, to make this like a super technical proof, we would have to do some converting to measures and adding to 180 and subtracting out stuff. But we're just going to do a concept idea here. Okay? So uh, 1 and 4 are supplementary. And 2 and 3 are supplementary. 1 is 2. So what can I plug in here? One is two. What could I plug in here? Uh, maybe I don't really need that. One and three. Yeah, I do. So what can I plug in here? 
If 1 is 2 and this is 2, what can I plug right there? 1. Okay, and how come? Yep, so we just did this substitution right there. Okay, so let's see if you can see this. 1 and 4 are supplementary, and 1 and 3 are supplementary. So what is true about, what, what is the conclusion from saying that? It's this. Right? Because they 1 and 3 are both supplementary to the same thing. Oh, sorry, I have this wrong. That's 4. Sorry about that. These are both supplementary to angle 1. So they must be equal to each other. They have to be, right? Again, for a completely technical proof, there would have to be some switching over to measures and adding to 180 and subtracting stuff out, and then it would be super clear. The logic is here, though, that we're showing. Okay? So, um, 1 and 4, 1 and 3. Oh, the common angle is 1, so that leaves the other two as congruent. And technically, that would be like subtraction property. And then P and R, this is now converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. So we could have used both methods. Obviously, the first one was easier, though, right? Okay. How'd that go? Anybody get it? Like, let's say it was five points. How many points did you just get? Okay. And just to let you know, I do typically put each of the, each piece as a half point. So, that would be like a six point proof. No. Why did I just count? One, two, three, yeah. Six. Six point proof. So, most of our proofs aren't that long. And sometimes I combine like a line or two. If there's various ways to do it. I don't want to like count for all of the ways, so huh? I will. Uh, <laughs> Just for you, Noah. <laughs>